सानो बेलामा मैले गिभ अप गर्न पर्ने कुराहरु जस्तो कि मलाई बाहिर घुम्न जान मन लाग्थ्यो अथवा साथीहरुसँग खेल्न मन लाग्थ्यो तर म जतिखेर पनि मेरो हात खुट्टा गल्ने हुन्थ्यो अनि मैले खेल्न पाउँदिन थिए अनि त्यसपछि के गर्न सक्छु के गरौँ भन्ने आर्ट चाहिँ त्यो आउँदैन रहेछ मेरो सेल्फ एस्टिम मा नै त्यसले असर गर्यो त्यो माइन्डसेट बस्दो रहेछ म सानो थिए त्यति बेलामा भनेपछि मेरो म स्कुल गइरहेको थिएँ अनि त्यति बेलामा मेरो लागि च्यालेन्ज चाहिँ मैले मेरो पढाइमा राम्रोसँग ध्यान दिन सकिनँ मेरो पर्फर्मेन्स अलिकति कम्प्रोमाइज नै भयो एसएससीको टाइममा जब हामीहरूको फाइनल एक्जामको बेला थियो त्यति बेलामा मलाई बात जोरोले गर्दा मेरो हात खुट्टाको जोइन्ट्सहरू दुख्ने भएको थियो त्यसले गर्दा मैले एक्जाम पनि राम्रोसँग दिन सकिनँ त्यसको लागि जुन आर्थिक रूपमा हामीहरूले तयारी पनि हुनुपर्ने हुन्छ त्यो कुरा चाहिँ मेरो परिवारको लागि ठुलो चुनौती पनि रह्यो जस्तो कि एउटा मात्रै औषधी खाँदिन म आफै नै चार पाँचवटा औषधी खान्छु दिनमै अनि त्यसपछि अब हिसाब गर्दै गऱ्यो भने त धेरै नै खर्च हुन आउँछ प्लस मेरो दुईवटा अपरेसन अनि अरू कुराहरू मिलाउनु पर्ने कुरामा खर्चहरू भइरहेको हुन्थ्यो यो रोग लागिसके पछाडि त एकचोटि हस्पिटल गएर निको भएर घर फर्किने होइन सधैँ नै औषधी खानु पर्छ अनि त्यस पछाडि नमरुन्जेलसम्म त्यसमाथि पनि आफ्नो छोरी छोरीको लागि किन यतिकै खर्च गरिराखेको छौँ तिम म भइदिएको तिम्रो ठाउँमा भइदिएको भए म मेरो छोरालाई भएको भए गर्थ्यो होला छोरीको लागि त भन्ने जस्तो पनि कुरा आएको थियो तर पनि म मेरो बुवा आमाप्रति मेरो फ्यामिलीप्रति एकदमै थ्याङ्कफुल छु किनभने त्यति बेलामा उहाँहरूले त्यो सोच्नु भएन छोरा छोरी सबैलाई बराबरी नै राख्नुभयो अनि नसके पनि ऋण लिएर भए पनि अहिले चाहिँ उहाँहरूले जति गर्नुभयो दुःख त्यति बेलामा अहिले चाहिँ उहाँहरू पनि खुसी हुनुहुन्छ किनभने अहिले म यसरी यहाँ बोल्न पाइरहेको छु I'm absolutely passionate about nature and gardening. Not just the beauty of it and the cycle of life, but I just love the fact that it has healing powers. Even just sitting in the garden reading a book is completely therapeutic. It started very quietly. I got pins and needles in my hand and I'd broken my wrist and thought it was related to that, but it actually turned out that I'd got a generalised problem with my nerves. I've been on treatment since 97. And then in 2007, I got extremely, extremely ill. Ended up in hospital for three months and came out in a wheelchair. So I went from being a very active, very dynamic pediatrician, mother, athlete. I ran, I cycled, I did triathlon, to being in a wheelchair. People have very different approach to people in wheelchairs and um, quite surprisingly, you know, you're often patronized and people speak to you as if you're an idiot, even though there's nothing wrong with my brain, my brain's perfectly functional. We had to make a lot of adjustments to the house and our house was not a suitable house for someone who was disabled, but we loved where we lived. One of the social workers just sort of said, why don't you just move house, that would be easier. That was a very upsetting remark. I found that very difficult to cope with. It was like, well, it doesn't matter anymore because you're disabled. So, you know, you live where it's best 
for someone who's disabled, not where it's best for you as a person. When we knew she was becoming really unwell, it fundamentally changed both our lives massively, massively. What Helen has gone through is severe, to say the least. But even people with a tenth of her problems need support and need compassion and need understanding so that they can leave the best lives that they can. And it's a tribute to Helena's personality that she has managed to do that even with all the challenges that the, the disease has brought. I think it's difficult to understand if you haven't been through it. You learn a lot about yourself. I was extremely independent and felt very strongly about, as a woman, being a role model for my boys. And I think that's what you have to learn to hang on to, that actually inside you haven't changed. You may be disabled, may have illnesses, but you're not defined by that. But that takes time to get to that realisation. It doesn't happen overnight. And I think it takes years. What makes me happy now? A long time makes me happy. I like to see the water. There's something about it that just calms me. For me to tell my mother, I felt like I needed to take her somewhere where you know, someone could sort of facilitate the environment for me. And so we went to this center. The lady who founded the organization tried to ease me into it. And I, and I told my mom, and my mom broke down in tears. You know, she cried out, I have failed as a mother. And on the one hand, I, I felt so bad. But on the other hand, and I remember blotting out, you haven't failed as a mother, please don't make this about you. This is about me. Now that I think about it, in retrospect, I feel like maybe when she said she failed, it's not so much that I got raped. It was that I couldn't tell her. I don't know which part. What I noticed was that she started to um, separate herself from family. When everybody's out in the living room watching movies, she was always in the room lying down and not wanting to be dragged into anything. So she kind of like just removed herself from almost everything. It's been tough because on the one hand, you have a family that wants to be supportive, but what prepares an average Nigerian to respond to a mental health crisis? Nothing prepares you for that. In Nigeria today, nothing. It's like, you want to get better, you have to learn to like summon the willpower. I'm like, mm. No, it doesn't work that way. And so they are trying to lovingly, from a good place, be supportive, but it's also trying to understand, like, how is it that you can't get up? I can't explain. You're living with something that on the inside, even you don't understand, and then you are trying to explain to other people. How do you do that? And so everybody's stuck. I have gotten some kind of support, but I had to create that support because I needed an opportunity to be able to sit down with other people with lived experience and for us to share and for us to hold each other accountable and for us to not feel like, you know, I have to you know, sugarcoat what I'm saying so that you can digest it. No, we're good. As raw as it could get. But that's a privilege that most Nigerians don't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I swear I was. Ooh, no, I that one. <laughs> oh, that one. Yeah, look, that's a nice one with the bag. Yeah. Before, I selfishly thought, you know, I'm going to wake up anyways. I can leave things for tomorrow. I don't now. Did you go right up to the camera? I make every day count. Five girls, including my mother, has been diagnosed with breast cancer. I think it was inevitable. However, I did get checked 
and they said that it's probably highly unlikely. They were wrong in this instance. It all happened very quickly and it didn't really give me time to fit in with my surrounds because I kept working. I hid within myself. It made it much easier, people making decisions for me. And I think that's why I threw myself into work. I didn't want self-pity, uh, and that's very hard to do. A lot of my family I didn't tell either. I just wanted to deal with it the best way I knew how. Deep down, I just wanted to put all my energy into living. Um, thing. I strongly advocate early intervention. Early screening helped me to get diagnosed at a very early stage. Had I had left it, uh, then you know my outcome may not have been so great. Oh, that's it. Thank you. We have a health promotion program here, making Aboriginal women aware of their bodies. We have screening days where we bring the mammogram bus. We have lunch, we get hairdressers in, beauty practitioners. It's a real ladies' day. It enables them to feel free, you know, talk amongst themselves. Aboriginal women, you know, young women, they don't want to go and, and take all their clothes off and, and get tested. There's also that sense of, it would never happen to me. You know, oh, that's an older people's illness. I won't get it. But in actual fact, a lot of young people get it. Aboriginal people tend to get these illnesses at a younger age than non-Aboriginal people. Sometimes we're unable to talk about our own selves. You know, we're too busy worrying about the children, our elders, and so to Focus on oneself and one's body becomes a new experience. أنا سلوي بالحياة تبعيتي اللي هوي الوحيدة أو الشيء كرياضي من زمان يعني مش من هلا. ومتزوج وعندي بنوتي بنتي اسم الله عليها ومدامتي هاي ده حياتنا. إجمالا نحن حياتنا بلبنان مليئة تقريبا مليئة لحياتنا بلبنان بالمغامرات والله صارت بالصدفة أنا عندي إذا شفت السكر تبعي بس كان أنا عندي سكر كان عندي تقريبا مش سكر كان عندي مضاعفات خدنا التيست عم سكر سكرت المكنة ما في ما في ما كانت تعطي ايرور ما كان حملت حالي ورحت لعنده اخذ التيست اللي عليه 800 اللي كيف عايش انت كله ما بعرف وصرت خفف تلقائيا اني من نوعي انا من مني وعملت فحصين ثلاثه وصار يتدرج تدرج تدرج لحدود ما صار الانسولين اعمله زيرو هو تقريبا قال لي بتراجعني يمكن بتسكر ثلاث شهور ما صدق شو عم بيصير كل شيء بابا قطع فيه بهز جيرني ثرو اوت هيز لايف ثرو اوت هيز دايبيتيز بفتخر بهز ريزيلينس هي لوست ا سيستر تو تايب 1 دايبيتيز وين شي واز 16 اي واز دايجنوز وين اي واز 15 سو ات واز ا فيري هارد ام تروث فور هيم تو كايند اوف كومن تيرمز ويل With his diagnosis, I was honestly surprised by the way Kenan Hamas and no, he couldn't on top of his condition and he cited Alaya. And him doing it gave me a lot of motivation. And the impact that I'm doing in the community is really helpful. برفقات وبهول سمول ستاف اللي بيجبرون يروحوا مثلاً مشوة جروب يتمشوا أو ينتبهوا على أكلهم يجبروها عند الحكيم. For me, that's really powerful. Someone that has been through so much, and because of diabetes. is able to turn, turn it into something positive. So it gives me a lot of hope, honestly. It shows that as it's just not a way tools, support, education, be able to go on top of their condition.
لما تشخصت اكيد انا بدي احافظ على نفسيتي انا بدي احافظ على نفسي انا ومهما كان المرض شديد مهما كان المرض شديد للانسان هو مرضه لاله مش لغيره صحيح الناس بتتعاطف معك بتتعاطف معك بس هي بالاخر نفسي انا انا بدي احافظ عليها Minha esposa é muito engajada também, é, quer saber de tudo, quer se informar de tudo. É muito, muito engraçado que ela fala até pro meu filhinho, imagina que tem um mês e uma semana, ela fala, ah, vamos, vamos aplicar insulina no papai hoje? Quando eu recebi o diagnóstico, é, foi absolutamente difícil de lidar né, com essa situação de agora, né, que, que é comigo, apesar de eu, de eu ver outras pessoas, essas pessoas não tinham a minha idade, né, eram pessoas de muito mais idade que tinham diabetes, né, e eu não conhecia ninguém na minha idade que tinha, que tivesse diabetes. Hoje o Departamento de Advocacy da, da DJ Diabetes Brasil participa de grupos de trabalho com o Ministério da Saúde e com muitas outras entidades para melhorar os cuidados com diabetes, o acesso às diferentes insulinas e medicamentos que as pessoas com diabetes precisam. É, mas o Mark hoje eu vejo ele como, muito como um mentor, né? tanto nessa parte de diabetes, mas como também de políticas públicas, né, de saúde pública, né, hoje a gente trabalha junto já, já faz um tempo e, e para mim ele é, além de, de ser um, um ótimo líder, ele é um mentor. <risos> eu não sei se como, como eu inspiro as pessoas, né, é o melhor termo, né, mas certamente o que, o que eu faço é intencionalmente procurar identificar potencialidades e dar oportunidades para elas, né? Então, entender aí onde elas podem chegar e, claro, né? Investir nisso e, e realmente incentivá-las a ir mais longe, não ficar só no, no básico e acho que isso é, é muito importante, né? Então, acho que tem sido, para mim, fundamental provocar, né? Ou, ou facilitar ou encorajar o desenvolvimento de cada um. अनि तेस पिसारी अजे मुन्ना तो ऑपरेशन पशी रामरे कंडीशन पनी होते गए हो मेरे मेरो प्लस टू सकाई बैचलर्स पनी सकाई संग संगे मास्टर्स पनी सकाई ये संग संगे चे मेरे एस वॉइसेस ऑफ एनसीडीआई पोवर्टी फेलो मस्सी की राय कुछ कि यो क्षेत्र में कौन सरे एडवोकेसी गानो बरसा बने रा मेरे थोड़े आदिन गाने बल जो स्लाइस है जो मैं टिकार दीजिए सब वहाँ हमें सब ऐसा ना एक ही ठाम मचा ही ना एक टा ग्रुप था ही ना अनि तो इधर हमले सब ऐसा ना लेके ठाम ले उन्हें सक्यो मने जे आफ्ले बॉय को आफ्ले जीवन में बोगे को चैलेंजेस और हमें एक्सपीरियंस शेयर करने सक्सो अनि मेरो समस्या और को लागी समाधान पर नहीं होना सक्सा I absolutely loved my job, absolutely loved it. I wanted to be a paediatrician since I was 12. I think I hadn't realised how much I was defined by being a paediatrician, um, and that took a lot of adjusting to, and I still find it difficult to go back to the children's hospital where I worked. As a healthcare professional, I felt very strongly that I would still like to do that, and I found ways of doing that. So there's the healing garden, and helping making that available to the community. Doctors or social prescription link workers can prescribe time in the garden instead of, say, antidepressants for someone who's got anxiety. And I feel really proud that I've managed to get to the point where we're accepted as a social prescription. I'm also very proud of the advocacy I do for palliative care and for people living with NCDs. Being a trustee on a palliative care charity doing work for the NCD Alliance, writing a report about the impact of the aid cuts in the UK on provision for people living with NCDs. My hopes for the future for everyone with NCDs is that they're valued and involved in planning their own care, that they have a louder voice to policymakers, that they're much more involved right from the beginning. 
When I did have a suicide attempt, one of the things that I was told on the bed when I was admitted in the hospital was that you do know that you've committed a criminal offence. Exactly, because attempted suicide is a criminal offence. The healthcare system is dysfunctional, that's a fact. Then you go into mental health care that is largely underfunded. It's all about treatment and curing just the biomedical aspect. We haven't built enough of a framework for psychosocial support. It is medical practitioners that get to decide everything that has to do with the person with a mental health condition. We forget that the majority of what mental health conditions are really about is psychosocial in nature. Affordable housing, meaningful employment, good health care, good education. Poverty is always the key indicator across the board. If we do not solve a poverty issue, then we do not solve a mental health issue. The only way we're going to do that is if we begin to look at how we can do it whilst preserving the dignity of people who interact with mental health care. Because if I do not feel safe, then why am I going to approach it in the first place? I love talking about She Rights Woman. I started She Rights Woman after my first near suicide attempt. We're a movement that gives mental health a voice in Nigeria by empowering people who actually live with mental health conditions to tell their own stories, to co-create their own solutions, and to advocate for their own rights. It's about possibilities that exist beyond what you have been conditioned to believe about people with mental health conditions. People didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. People couldn't have thought that there would come a time when people with mental health conditions would speak so openly on social media in Nigeria and say that. Yes, I live with a mental health condition. Yes, I live with depression. Yes, I see a therapist. Yes, I take medication. So what? And I think what people don't understand is that whilst what we have done is about other people, on a very deeper level, it has also been an angle for me. It has kept me alive as well. I don't think at the beginning even I thought, oh, I'm going to do this and do this, and then it's going to lead to this. No. It's just looking back and you're like, <laughs> I tell her every time, whether she's on TV or she's winning an award, I'm too proud of her work. So, yeah. <sighs>
كان كل شيء متوفر نحن عندنا بلبنان، يعني كان السمك، الدجاج، اللحمه، كان كله متوفر عندنا بلبنان، الغذاء اليومي كان بهداك الوقت يختلف كليا عن اليوم، بس نحن بسبب هلا الغلاء اللي صار عندنا، غلاء وتدني العمله تبعيتنا، وصلنا ل... وصلنا يمكن لمرحله يمكن مريض السكري اللي بيكون اني صار عندي بهداك الوقت اللي يمكن ما بتزبط معه اللي صار تاني معه. عدم يعني بالنهايه عدم ايجابيه الوضع اللي عم نعيشه. هذا اللي هلا الظروف الاقتصاديه الموجوده عندنا وهيدي ظروفنا وهيدي حياتنا هلا كيف بدنا نتخطاها ما بعرف A lot of our women are a bit reluctant to have breast screening because they don't want the extra burden and that's the biggest thing to overcome getting those messages out that you know if you go early if you if you have early detection that means you know there's more chance of your um, success rate. The next step is the surgery and if you can't access affordable surgery what's the point of screening? You know the two come together. It doesn't matter which part of the world you come from if you can't have the access to affordable or free surgery then it depletes the purpose, unless you're just collecting data. Eu vou chamar a atenção aqui para duas coisas, né? Então, uma delas é, é os custos. Então, o Brasil é o país na América do Sul que mais gasta por pessoa com diabetes, né? E nem por isso tem bons resultados. Então, saíram duas pesquisas, né? Uma, inclusive, é, bastante recente esse ano, mostrando jovens de 13 a 19 anos, 30% deles já apresentando alguma complicação do diabetes. Então é uma realidade muito triste, né? que a gente não poderia aceitar e que a gente tem que mudar o quanto antes. The last form that we had to fill in for my personal independence payment took Ian and I together five hours to fill in. We've got five degrees between us. Um, we're medically qualified and we couldn't understand the form. They are deliberately designed, it feels, to make them difficult to fill in, to dissuade people from claiming benefits. It's really demoralising. I think that's something that policymakers really should understand better. They should be really in much simpler language. I'm a lucky giant, so you have a little bit of a song at Hassa. This is a garden, I'm a choices, Rahamro Avas, Rahamro Bogaya Rulaite, Body Mohoto Dinaversa. We need to tell you what support looks like for us. We need to tell you what a system that is just and equal and fair looks like for us. We need to tell you what human rights respect and treatment looks like for us. We need to tell you what you should put in your bills because you cannot know more about my condition than I do. If this message reaches to anyone in the international domain, listen to people. They have more power than they seem and they can really help. Fullest no, la, that I'll give you the hair by putting on my chin, you know, success, relax.